So what we're going to do this morning is to set out a hotline mix. And we've got all the various ingredients here to set out hotline mix. We have three different types of sand. We have a red sand and we have these two brown sands. And the reason we're using one of the sands which is slightly more red than the other two is because the mortar joints in the Union Chapel where we are today has a, a quite a red mortar so we can achieve that mortar match by using a red sand in the mix. So what we're going to do is to gauge out the sand first of all. It's three parts sands to one part lime and then we're going to set out two bags of sand and then we're going to gauge out, that's measuring out in the bucket, an equal quantity of lime and then we're going to make a, a, a sand pit, put the lime inside and then add water and that's when it becomes explosive. Obviously the main thing is to avoid working with cements and working with limes and working with quick lime is, as far as I'm concerned, as near as you can get to the original product. So we have the stone that has been burnt and turned into quick lime and then we're adding our sand as an aggregate and water and we're making our mortar mix. But we are dealing with quick lime and quick lime is chalk or stone that has been burnt to drive out all the moisture. So it's moisture hungry. So if you get it on your hand, it will burn. So it is an aggressive material. So as such, you have to take precautions. The reason for cutting the bags is that we're going to use the bags for sheeting up onto the, the hotline mix. So if you just cut the bags with a shovel or you're a little bit kind of negligent, you're not going to be able to use them when you come to sheet it up. It's best to gauge out your materials so you can make sure that you get an equal 3 to 1 ratio. Now we're doing a relatively small mix today, just for demonstration purposes. Now there's a certain amount of water, moisture, already in the sand. So you'll suddenly start feeling the heat being generated by the, by the lime. So now we're going to add the water and this is where it becomes reactive. And uh, this is why you have to have your goggles, your eye protectors, your mask for vapours and your gloves. You also need to do it in the outside. And then what we're going to do is to close it over now. And this is where we've got our red sand to give the mortar a bit more of a distinctive colour. And what will happen now is that the, the lime will take up the water um, and it's already reaching quite a high temperature. Obviously when you come to work with this later, you'll need to use a metal bucket because it will melt a plastic bucket. So once the, the lime has taken up the water, it starts to expand. We'll cover it up. We want the lime to start drying out the sand and evaporating the water. We want to try and keep as much heat in as possible. That's it, job done. We would normally leave this for 24 hours and then come back to it tomorrow and sieve it through to take all the lumps out. And then we've got a material that we can store in plastic bags or in tubs until we need it when we add more water and make a mortar mix. So we've spoken about quicklime um, and I'll just show you the bag that we have here of quicklime. This is a, a granular material which is burnt directly from the limestone, so this can be limestone or it can be chalk, and that's a sedimentary rock, it's calcium carbonate, so once it's actually been fired, it turns into this granular form, and as you've seen, we've done a hot lime mix. You can also buy it in a putty form, and uh, the putty form we have here, and this is the same material, but it's been slaked, that is to say, it has been submerged in water, you have to make sure it has water on top of the tub so that it doesn't dry out but this will last for many years then you can mix this with an aggregate and you can make your mortar mixes. The third option for making a mortar mix is by using a bag lime and they come in such products as this and the five is an indication of its strength 
and that is equivalent to five newtons. Five newtons is really, as NHL5, naturally hydraulic line five, is as strong as you could possibly want and that would only be used for flaunching on chimney pots or exposed areas. You would ideally want to work with a bag line that's two newtons. But when you bear in mind that cement starts at 45 newtons and runs up to 65, it shows you how inappropriate cement is for using in historic buildings. And this is a sample just left in the bottom of a bucket. This was, wasn't actually cement mix, this was just cement in water that has been standing for a few hours overnight. And you can see how hard that has become. Now the whole point of working with these mortars is that we want the mortars to be softer than the brick. So if there's any movement in a building at all, then it's the mortar that fails and the bricks aren't. The bricks have got quite a high carbon footprint because they've taken quite a lot of material and time to make the brick. The lime can be raked out of the joints, put back into, reintroduced into a mix and used again. So the idea is that you use mortars which are softer than the bricks themselves. And obviously this is 65 newtons, this is more like stone, so cement is to be avoided at all times. Not only is it too hard, but it also traps moisture. So what we're going to do now is to show you basically how putty is made, lime putty. And you start off with your quick lime, and you'll note that I've got my goggles and my face mask and my respirator and my gloves on to do this. And what's happening is that the quicklime is taking up the, the water and we're making putty. The benefit of using a bolt putty is that you know that it's slaked for at least two years. I've had this in the workshop for two years and it was probably two years old prior to that. Um, but it means that it's done all of its um, slaking that it's going to, going to need, where this one is still active. And the problem of using quicklime as a putty without it being matured is that it will slake naturally inside the wall. So if you put it in a, a mortar mix and use it for a plaster base, and then you lime wash it six months later, you might find that the unslaked particles of lime slake in the wall and they pop the plaster. So that's why you must have a putty that is mature. Uh, so what we're actually going to do is a, a lime putty mortar mix now. And the ratio that I use um, is two to one. That's two parts sand. Uh, we use sharp builder sand uh, to one part lime putty. So we're going to put the putty in a gauging bucket and we're going to do one of these with two sand. And this is a, a bucket trowel specifically designed to get material out of a bucket and that's a standard bucket trowel. Okay, so we've done one of that. And again, the mortar mix for uh, Union Chapel is, is quite a red mortar mix. So we use a red aggregate. Um, I always prefer to mix by hand. Um, if you mix it in a cement mixer you, you end up with round rounds of unmixed material. It's easier mixing bag lime in a conventional cement mixer. What you really need to knock up lime really is a, a roller mixer in which you have the material laying out in a tray and you have a a roller with a big stone. Well what we're doing here is that you'll notice that when you look at the the lime you've got a certain amount of lime putty mixed up with the sand and if you just rolled it around you'd end up with kind of golf ball which is useless. So what you want to do is you need to compress all that material together so you need as much aggregate as possible and you need to press the lime through it and that's really the process that you're looking at. What you would have had at one stage is you would have had cloven hoof animals treading this into the ground but really it's just to get the material compressed together. 
and the stickier it becomes, obviously the better your mortar mix is going to be. And you need to work it until it becomes a uniform colour. You don't want any chunks of, of putty which are going to suddenly burst through the mortar. This is where we should see, and this is one that I prepared earlier, but <laughs> we haven't got one. The mistake quite often is that when you're knocking up a putty, they, everyone thinks it's like this but too dry, and they add water to it, and by the time you come to mix it, it becomes too sloppy. So this, is, this, is, this will be a very good mortar mix, but it will need about an hour's worth of work to do that. So of course, it becomes an expensive item because you've got labour costs of an hour to, to knock it up, you've got a labour cost of an hour to actually mix it. The putty itself is relatively cheap but it's the labour that is the expensive part. So we've gone from a material which is the lime putty which is, is almost as dry as this and I was slightly concerned that this would be too dry to use but when you see the mortar that we've now made um, from the material just by adding the sand you can see that it would have been a mistake to have added any more water to it because the test really is that you want to get the mortar and keep it on the trail. So we're just returning now to the hot lime mix that we did an hour earlier. I would normally leave this overnight, um, so you mix it one day and then you knock it up the next and you run it through a sieve. Uh, but we're going to have a look at this now to see how this is performed in the last hour. So that is extremely hot um, and it's doing nicely. It may need a little bit more time, but you can see by the cracking that what's happening is the lime inside is expanding and all that granular material that we put in there is now turning to powder. What we will have to do is when we turn this over is to mix up the powder material with the lime and with the aggregate and it's this that we make our mortar from and maybe if we just cut out a small section of this we can put it in a bucket and I can do a quick mortar mix for you. And then we can do a comparison between the two mortars. So those are the two mortar mixes. This one is with the lime putty and this one is with the quick lime. And what's interesting about the quick lime mix is that when you look at some of these early mixes that we have, particularly on medieval buildings and to a certain degree lots of early Georgian buildings, the mortar has got a lot of unfired bits of chalk in it, and bits of lime and strong aggregate and that's pretty much what we've got here and you know that when that when that dries out that's going to be a pretty good match for some of these early early mortars and also the colour's quite right for Union Chapel as well which is quite handy because we've used this red sand. So we've made a, made a mortar mix for bricklaying and we've made a mortar mix for brick laying from both a lime putty and from a hot lime mix. And now what we're going to do is make a base coat for plastering. And um, we've got sharp sand in here, which is absolutely fine for the base coat of plastering. When you go to the top coats, obviously you start using finer sands. But at the moment this is going to be a base coat and we're going to add some hair to it to act as a binder. And the hair that we have here, <laughs> it smells like London Zoo. Um, the white hair is uh, goat hair that we would put in, say, a top coat, just in case it came too close to the surface and showed up. Um, or we would use a dark horse hair as a binder. And the benefit of using um, horse hair um, is that it's got lots of microscopic barbs on it. So when it actually runs through the, um, through the lime, it acts as a binder, so the whole thing becomes like a mat, really, um, and it keeps it, uh, keeps it bound together. And we have to tease this in, so we, this is how we do the teasing in, while James keeps knocking it up. We don't want big lumps of hair going in, we just want small sections.
Now you'll note that we're we're putting hair in the putty mix, which is quite important. This is made from lime putty. The other mix that we made from the hot lime um, would stand a chance of melting the hair. So um, you would really want to use this for plastering when it was cold, otherwise it's too active and it will destroy the hair. The idea is that the hair is actually in there as a binder and you get it on the wall and you let it uh, carbonate on the wall in situ. In some of the uh, Victorian mixes that we, we work on, you find that they have big batches of hair like that in the middle of the, the lime and it acts as a weak point. Um, it's because someone has been a bit lazy when they've been teasing out the hair. This is all washed um, and meets all the safety um, regulations for horse hair so that we know that it hasn't come from a, a diseased stock. Some of the problems with um, medieval buildings is that the horse hair may have had anthrax in it, um, whereas we now we know that all these products are highly regulated.